All right, guys, today we're going to test out the Deeper Pro Plus. Now, if you've been around on my channel, you know I tried another uh, little fish sonar, fish finder. It's called the iBobber. I didn't have any luck with that one. The one I got was a faulty unit. So I decided to try a different brand, and we got the Deeper here. Now, Deeper makes, as far as I know currently, three models. They have the Deeper, the Deeper Pro, and the Deeper Pro Plus. I got the Pro Plus, so it's the best model they currently have. It's run on Wi-Fi. The Pro and Pro Plus run on Wi-Fi. The standard Deeper runs on Bluetooth. And the Pro and the Pro Plus have more range, uh, better battery life, and just some upgrades. The Pro Plus over the Pro has GPS and some other mapping things. Um, basically, if you're going to get one, I'd suggest going with at least the Pro uh, because it does have more range. So this has actually a 330 foot or 100 meter range from my phone, uh, from whatever you have it connected to. And then it has a 260 feet or 80 meter depth. It'll take uh, 15 scans per second, the Pro and the Pro Plus. The standard Deeper, I believe, does 7 scans a second. So again, not quite as good uh, hardware in there. And uh, Pro Plus shows GPS too. So, it turns out when it's in water, very similar to other the other one I've tried, the iBower. So we just got to go to the pond or the lake, and we're going to test this out. Don't know if I'm going to fish today. I'm going to bring a couple poles, and uh, I might throw in a little... Uh, Gulp. I don't have any actual bait with me. Uh, I could use lures or something, but I might just try throwing in a fake uh, gulf worm or something. Uh, but basically, I just want to test this. It has a couple modes. I have it connected to my Android phone. It has a couple modes. There's a basic and then there's a more detailed view. The unit itself has these three holes, and as you can see, I've already put one of these little grabbers on three screw holes. They come with two of these uh, little screw-in clips, screw-in grabbers, and they're in different positions for what you're using it for. It actually came with this sticker on it that I'll just show you. It says here, uh, from shore, from a bridge, or from a boat. So it's just basically going to be how you're pulling it in, because from shore, if you're straight out, you're going to be pulling it like this a little bit, and the sonars are right down there on the opposite side. So if you pull it a little bit, it's going to keep the sonar in the water. Then if you're on a bridge and you were throwing from a little bit of a height, same thing. You'd be pulling it just so it's in the water. And then on a boat, you'd probably hang it straight down from your boat. So it's just a different place to mount the thing. I'm going to open it up here. This one opens up to charge. You just untwist it, and inside really not much. This is just an empty shell. This is just a thing to line up with uh, to make it all lined up. And then all there is is a battery plug here. It uses a micro USB. So very simple. And then when you put this together it'll say waterproof in that area. Just got to spin it tight until you get to where it shows it's waterproof. So they recommend I actually didn't see in the instruction for this one, but for the last one I had, they recommend like, I think they said 20 pound line or so, just to make sure you don't lose it. So I'm going to be using 20 pound braided line, uh, depending what pole I put it on. might end up with 30 pound braided, just so I don't lose it. You don't want to, you know, risk losing it. Even 10 pound model I wouldn't use. Go with some heavy line. It's a fairly expensive thing. You don't want to cast it and just have it fly off your uh, line and then... Hopefully it comes back to shore, you know, it depends which way the wind's going. So in the box, you got the unit, you got two of these little uh, connectors, get your charge cord, which I didn't need because I have tons of these types of things. And then you just get a little pouch for it. Uh, you know, not really needed these pouch things, but a little pouch with a little clip. And other than that, just came with a couple instruction manuals and such. So we're going to go out and test this out. We're not going to use every feature it has, because like I said, this is the Pro Plus that has tons of features. It does mapping, it just GPS, so you can see exactly where you are and you know stuff like that. We'll try some of the modes, of course, and see what uh, you know clicking all the buttons does. There's not that much information in the manual, actually, how to use it. Um, so I did some research online and just looked around a little bit. 
but it seemed pretty simple. I ran through a demo and uh, it seemed pretty simple to use, so let's get out to the pond and give it a try. Alright guys, we're out at the pond and I'm going to show you guys just the screen here if I can zoom in and hopefully you guys can see this on screen there. So I've got this in the, um, what they call it, the detailed mode and it's only about six feet deep here. I'm going to try another area after this where we can get a little deeper readings. But it's showing about six feet and you see a fish here. So there's fish out there. I'm just going to reel this in slowly. I'll reel it like a few feet and then stop. And we'll see if we see any more fish. It looks like the water is 77 degrees. It's about five feet deep there. I'm going to reel it a little more. And we're at four feet deep. And there's another fish, a couple more fish, just right out there. Gonna have to try casting a few times and see if we can get a fish. Let me go ahead and reel this the rest of the way in. I'm only about 10 feet out. I'll stop again once more. I'm getting to four feet, which is about the uh, shallowest this thing likes, is around four feet. And now we're just about five feet offshore. Looks like it's saying we're just at three feet now. And it shows the ground. There's not much weeds or anything. And that looks pretty right to me. I don't see any weeds out there. Oh, there's a fish right there. Just a few feet offshore. I actually just saw a fish bite at my line there. Alright. And now we're too shallow. We're just about a foot offshore. Let me put this into the other mode. Basic. And let's try casting it again. All right, so I casted it straight out like uh, 20, 30 feet. And now we're back at six foot depth. As you can see, we're getting deeper here. Hopefully you guys can see this on the camera. So our depth went down a bit. And we're not seeing, oh, there's a fish coming across. A couple fish out there. Well, there's definitely looking like this fish here. I'm not moving the deeper. It's just out there about 20 feet. And we're catching little fish coming up here, a lot of them. A real lot of them. Like, uh, oh my, oh man, they just keep showing up. So supposedly, there are tons of fish right in front of me, about 20 feet out. Well, we're gonna have to test that, we're gonna have to throw in a line. Let me just reel this in about five feet and see if it picks up any more fish five feet in. And it's looking like currently not showing us many fish. I'm going to slowly reel it a little bit further. Oh, there's another fish. Hopefully you guys can see. My phone looks really bad to me. It's really, it's not too sunny out, but it's sunny out here. And my screen cover is just not the best. So hopefully you guys can see this good. But I keep getting fish marks. <coughs> so there must be fish right in front of me. So we're going to have to cast in a line. I've got my... Uh, other pole here with just this little jiggy on it and that should be good for bass, crappie, you know most fish you're not going to catch a catfish or anything on there but bass or crappie should bite that so we can even bluegill if they're big enough so there's definitely fish out there let's go ahead and try fishing and see if this deeper helps me locate and catch some fish Well, we got a fish. That's a pretty big bluegill, actually. Cast a few more times, but it definitely saw some fish under there. Get him off and then try a few more times. My bait got a little messed up. They were pulling at it, now it's not sitting on there right. So, I'm going to add on just a red worm to the tail of this to make a trail for the red worm here. 
and this will also provide just some scent so we'll see if this makes it better catches another fish or two now we got a long tail off there with the fake worm probably doesn't have to be as long as it is but that's all right all right let's give it a go now they keep stealing my worm off this hook too easy, so I'm going to try a different setup. Alright, so we're just going to try a little hook with fake worm, a little bobber. I think they're just bluegills here, I'm not sure, but let's catch a few more. These are pretty big bluegills. Keep going. Looks like there's a good amount straight out and coming straight towards shore. So I'm just going to place it about five feet out. <laughs> we went from a pretty bl big bluegill to a little tiny one. I hate when they jump and they spike you. You got to get them held quickly. Uh, we went from a big bluegill to Pretty little guy. Come on. Get out of there, Hook. Well, let's get one more. <laughs> okay. We went even littler. Look at that little guy. <laughs> Tiny. Another little guy. Let's go ahead and change spots and give this another go. All right, guys, I'm out there about uh, 20, 30 feet. I'm getting some fish. Now it's really algae-ish out there. I'm going to show you guys. Well, that's a standard mode. You can see there's some fish. It's showing at one feet, two feet, 1.9 feet. Let's go to detailed. Oh, there's like a bird attacking. <laughs> he must have a nest nearby. Alright, it's not showing too much here on the, uh, what do they call that? Detailed. Too shallow or too deep, it's saying. Let me just go ahead and show you. This is the problem. There's algae everywhere, so... I know this place is deep. I know that it's probably 15 feet, just just a little bit out there, like where the bobber is. But there's algae everywhere, so the sonar is just reading the algae, and it's not able to get a good reading due to all the algae. This pond, you barely need it by the shore, but by the shore it's just bluegills. If you guys can see through, there's just millions of them. No point to catching them to show you guys, because you can just see them. Don't need the fish finder for that. But we got some fish at the other place before we came here. So I might fish a little bit for fun, but it looks like in this pond right now there's not much use for the deeper due to all this algae. It's just, you know, it can't read through that, obviously. So we're just kind of stuck. And the whole pond is algae. I don't know if you can see. The whole pond is algae everywhere. It's not the 
best place to try. I tried going down the sides a little bit and didn't get any better luck just because of the algae. So that's not the product's fault. But um, it definitely worked because the first pond we tried before we came here got those fish monitored on there and then we caught some and I wasn't seeing those from shore. Those were just what the deeper showed me. Alright guys, so I think that's it for today for the testing. But we were able to test it. Definitely worked. I would say pretty darn neat. It tells me the water temperature, told me the uh, detailed and basic scans. Now this thing could do more. It can do mapping, GPS mapping. There's more it can do and I might get some videos in the future. Um, I'm going to go out on a boat pretty soon. Uh, I like to rent a boat and go out with my trolling motor on this little bit bigger lake I know. So I'll probably do that sometime soon and try to get some video using this out there. I just can't use it here. If you guys can see again in the water, it's just algae city. So like I said, this can't read through that. So we will try it more in the future, but I'd say definitely cool. We caught some bluegill at the first place because of it. I just threw it in there, saw the fish, and we caught some fish. Here, as I said, we can pretty much see the bluegill everywhere if you can see on the camera through the water. A little bass over there too. I might throw in a little line, just try to catch some of the little bass that are by shore that I can see just for fun to fish. But deeper, deeper pro, deeper pro plus. There's three models, I believe. I got the pro plus, works great. No connection issues, worked on the first try. No disconnecting issues, it, it was perfect. Had the eye bobber in the past and I had some issues with it, so I'm pretty happy with this. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know. Otherwise, happy fishing. We'll see you all later.